Hello, and welcome back to Cheer Up Terra. We must form the Imperial Frontier Forces as we prepare to carry out our sovereign mis sovereign's mission in Zebrica. We must be prepared to keep control of the land we seize in her name. For this, we shall establish the IFF, drawn from all the legions, who shall act to quelch to quash all resistance to the nightmare in the land taken from the natives and their false rulers. Yes. Oh, I'm not the five, so yeah, I'm not. I've. I was able to bring the Pegasi up to a full group. Which is good. Um. Yeah. Just, you know, preparing for a war. That is very soon to come. And yeah, let's, um, just put it in that order. All right, you guys can. Yeah, I'm just gonna put 26, the max amount I can, in that group. And let's put 2 in the other group. And I actually wanna take a you super defensive guy and put you over there. And yeah, there we go. Strike down the savages. It is time for our conquest in the name of our empress. She has laid before us targets to secure valuable resources and population centers. We shall first strike at Tobuk, the state of gunrunners, followed by Zeratina, the land of the golden deserts. May our goddess bless our missions. Yes. May you? <laughs> May you goddess. Oh my goodness, I could wake, make way more of these now. Um, well, I'm already in the middle of this one, so I'm just gonna let that be. In fact, I'm actually gonna. Oh, I sh I meant to give you those two. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'm sure that'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen, right? Yeah, you get it. Mm -hmm. Where can I strike this war? There we go. 30 days. That's what you have left. Imperial experts. With Chirup Terra's isolation from the world, we had to steal industrial secrets from Equestria for years. But now that our Empress rules, she has sent industrial experts to assist in continuing our development and bringing our economy into the future. Thank you.
Inspired by venerable tradition, the IFF secures our newly conquered territories with skills and a pond. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Now that, that is a Floina right there. Oh boy, that's a Floina, all right. Wow. I have never seen that impressive of an AI Floina. I wish them luck just because that's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just purely just impressiveness. Let me put my planes just over our own territories. Imperial expertise. Primrose was a lot of things, but not a mare with scruples. Her dear father had made sure of that. At the end of the day, what mattered was being one step ahead of your adversaries, and a good profit margin. And as local Terran officials led her and her survey team around the site, Primrose took the occasion to compliment herself on the ex excellent investment she had made. Throwing her lot with Nightmare Moon had seemed like a dangerous proposition at the time, putting aside the obvious matter of treason. Yet, it was a bet that had paid off, allowing her to de devour the those rivals that had either been too slow in picking a side, or had picked the wrong one. She drew a deep breath, closing her eyes for a brief moment. Primrose could already hear the bustling workers and roaring machines of the new industrial complex soon to be built there. It was but one of the many sites the Chirrup Terran government has granted her company in an effort to truly industrialize the country. Of course, there was the matter of the workforce, which Chirrup Terrans seemed to have an ample supply, and a docile one, too. Finally, she wouldn't have to worry about the pesky unions bringing her factories to a grinding halt, because a cult had sprained his ankle. She was free to one her industries the way she liked, like one giant move machine, churning out products and money nonstop. Ah yes, her father would have truly been proud of her right now. A grand new assignment. And some extra manpower. Utilize chain gangs. What can I do? Nah. Um. Yeah, sure. Let's let's just get some stability. Um, as our armies sweep through northern Zebraca, we found ourselves with an abundance of prisoners. Rather than letting them be a mere hindrance on our resources, we shall organize them into labor teams dedicated to extending the required infrastructure necessary to to sustain our armed force forces good 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 over to these troops they're doing well oh Hurricane. Our naval patrols reported a massive hurricane descending on our state, likely to cause extreme loss of life. Emerald Light ordered a massive con contingent of Pegasi and Thrustrals to engage with the storm and redirect it away. More conveniently, the Hippogriffs are well within the range we could deflect it. Although the storm still grazed our northern most province, and many heroic soldiers gave their lives trying to control the storm, in the end we were successful. We are confident that this will strike a powerful blow against the hippogriffs. Is this the storm event you get? Yeah, hippogriffia. Oh, and where Xena gets it too. I, I didn't know that you get it because of them. 
Wow, that gives me way more rudeness factor than I had before. I had no idea that was the case. Wow. My little troops go invade the enemies of our state. Do 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 do. No. Inward light progress support. Project knock tool three. I guess the warnings of the team. I graded Kamet's. Comet's request to continue his regime of injections. The research team's theory about the cognitive decay of Comet were unfortunately correct. I am loath to admit failure, however. The Council desired a super soldier, not a super officer. Although he has stagnated mentality, Comet's existing faith in our goddess and our cause has remained steadfast. While he ha will not be performing complex algebra soon, Comet has survived all injections and testings. Some see a grotesque monster, but I merely observe the pinnacle of the equine form. He stands two heads over me now, eye level with the false god Celestia. He has killed two sparring partners and severally wounded six more before the council overruled my continued desire for further testing. Comet Flash may not be a general, but he is what we wanted. He is a calculating, detached, and powerful stallion. His mind is weak, but despite this, he is strong. I advise against giving him any true command, but I'm granting him a special status as an elite agent of the LMRD. Special ordinance and armor will be crafted for him, and Shirup Terrell will, will bear witness to the first super soldier. Oh! Okay, this is how you get this guy. I've seen people talking about this guy on Reddit. Yeah. Yeah, the, the living weapon guy that can only hold one troop. I've heard about this guy, as I said, on Reddit. Let's just give him, like, our best troop currently. Can you Do you do well with um, special forces as well? Division. Just division effects. Um, division speed, division attrition, attack defense. Yeah, you do just as well. So yeah, you can have that guy. And obviously, with him joining, it made it way more easy. So we won. Okay. And, um. Okay, I'm gonna go with you next. Next, we will conquer Zarentina. Zarentina. For now, I will sadly have to. Occupy them. Hmm. I'll have to do that after, though. Mm. 
Mango Mangler once pointed out a rather obvious flaw in the Chirp Terror and Accolation of Labor. Several months ago, he noted that prisoners of war, criminals, and laborers were all used for manual labor, but there was never a cons consolidation of these assets. Essentially, his proposal was simply combining these different pools of labor into specific infrastructure projects. It does not matter who drives the railway spike into the ground as long as the line is laid according to schedule. Then Mago was caught in buzzling funds for the program. The Legionary Council, once word of the crime reached their table, dutifully dictated that Mango would serve his sentence in the program he helped create. He was given a hammer, a jumpsuit, and sent down to the rails. Laborers, POWs, and criminals like him made sure the railways of Chirp Terra expanded at a steady pace. In accordance with his proposal, the chain gangs were just another thinly veined form of forced labor. If Mango knew he would end up on one, he might have cared more about their conditions. Working the hammer was excruciating. Gandhi dancing broke the skin under a mango's hooves day in and day out. The pace was a mile a day, and mango made it look too for the look on the overseer's face. The sun always beat down oppressively overhead, keeping Mango soaked in sweat. He kept pace with the steady work songs of the line that focused him on the labor rather than the regret. Mango still wished he kept his mouth shut. Ironic. That is really ironic, though. That is so ironic. That's amazing. Actually, first, let me just wait a few days so I can get this immediately. There we go. Coconut crab ranching. The coconut crab is the largest land animal with an exoskeleton that does not use magical means for its survival. These large creatures were common in Chiroptera and have been hunted for centuries for their meat, nearly to the point of extinction. By expanding our protection of the crabs and allocating many more to a sectioned ranches, we can cultivate them safely. Nice. Let's cultivate some crabs. Why not? Where's my... Ah, my super troop right down there. Hmm. Not enough time. Alright, super soldier. Your plan, take the southern paths, even if you have to do it alone. Take all the southern block, then move north. You guys can first try pushing straight towards their capital. And now that you've took their capital, you can just push in whatever direction. The Carapace Friend. Honeydew wanted a puppy more than anything in the world. She went to Temple and listened through all the Moonspeaker sermons like a good filly, and always listened to her pe parents like the nightmare said to. She got good grades in school and hated the sunnies with all her guts, just like she was supposed to. Then her heart's warming eve, and after she'd been a good pony all year, and when she finally was going to get what she deserved, her parent gave her Waddles, a giant coconut crab. Waddles wasn't cute or fast, and when she tried to play fetch with him, he just starved. Stared. I, I hope he doesn't just starve when you're playing fetch. Or she thought he just stared. She wasn't even sure where his eyes were or if he was a he. There was one thing, though, that Waddles could do that a dog could not. She'd also gotten a genuine crab saddle with him. It took more than a few weeks to get Waddles to let her try it out, but after a few bribes of spoiled sweets and extra shell scrubs, Honeydew found herself loving her new best friend. Other ponies might have dogs or cats, but when it was time to play Legionnaires and Sunnies, Honeydew always was, pick was always picked first. Every pony in school wanted the mare with the personal monster on her side. Her and Waddles led the Legionnaires to victory every time, even though they never lost before, but they won faster now. He wasn't a pet for long, but Waddles was her battle buddy and friend. He's so adorable. Aww! This is a very sweet event. I'm glad that's there for me to read. 
Though through careful con negotiation, we've managed to draw the interest of a few equestrian industrial consortia. They've shown consideration, since considerable eagerness to establish them in new Cassitia. This will certainly be a good boost to our industrial cap capacities, and all they're asking for in exchange is a cheap workforce. Fortunately, we know exactly where to find it. I'm gonna bring you down to five with my... I've, yeah, I have plenty of weapons right now. In fact, I might just have to... Nah, that's good for now. What? You don't even care that you're out of supply range. You really, really don't. Okay, you're just you're just trying not to be too much there. Makes sense, I suppose. Annoying, but it makes sense. Project House Cat make sure make use of local fauna as weapons against the enemies of the state. Emphasis on ferocity and natural killing prowess. Magic makes us strong. Magic makes us strong. Magic makes us strong. Repeat over and over and over. Because why not? I really don't like the capital moving to random places in the desert that weren't even capitals before. Oh yeah, pick a side air attack, obviously. There we go. There we go, your nation's now gone. Alright, now everyone go ahead and head on back for the moment. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and work on starting to make all of you into those. Delete you and delete some of these guys too. Specifically the weaker ones first. And you, because you're dumb. The fate of a traitor. Choosing a method of execution was hardly Auburn Leaves' area of expertise. But unfortunately, her other skills simply weren't needed in this particular case. She was responsible for handling the Tobuckian warlords, and thus Walnut Drive fell under her jurisdiction. Even though there could be no saving an apostate and a traitor such as him, he was com compromising to cheer up Terra in every conceivable way. Whilst deliberating, her father entered the study and inspected the... Lintiency, lintian, 
litany of papers on her desk over her shoulder. Ah, so they finally caught him. No easy feat, so I hear. The legionnaires they ca captured him reported that he was mere minutes away from escaping again by sea. She returned, leaning back to the comfortable office chair. Walnut was somewhat infamous amongst the upper echelons for surviving his initial flight from the homeland and subsequent anti terran efforts in Tobuk. Needless to say, Auburn Breeze seemed mighty pleased that they had finally caught such a troublesome traitor who had so marred their otherwise spotless record of state security. So long as he comp competent hooves now, I doubt he'll cause trouble again. Have you decided yet? He asked, knowing all the specifics of the apostate's fate. She frowned for once a little indecisive. I think it would be best to have him hanged, have him brought before a firing squad and shot. As the hoof steps of the approaching guards heralded the coming of the inevitable demise, Wanatrav felt the lingering dread that had been circling his mind decease. A mare marked with a band indicating our medical service confirmed his identity, and then he was led by two guards from the cell, their hoof steps soon merging with the increasing drum beat of his heart, barely taking any notice of the firing squad that had been pushed. Positioned opposite, Walnut was ushered swiftly towards the wall and clapped in irons. Grim and stone-faced, the officer held up a sheet of paper, cl cleared her throat, and read in a loud, clear, and purposeful voice. The, K Kim, the condemned one Walnut Drive has been found guilty of apostasy and treason. <laughs> Henceforth, having been long stripped of rank and purpose within the legions, he is subsequently stripped of name and sentenced to death. The sentence is to be immediately carried out by firing squad. Another stallion approached him and threw a black sack over his head. Detail! The officer called out the second last word Walnut would hear. He realized silently. The, across from the doomed stallion, the officer pushed her spectacles up her snout, raised her hoof in the air, and signaled for the firing squad to ready. As the rifles were brought down upwards, the officer raised her hoof more indicative. A dictating for them to aim. Fire! She shouted, bringing her hoof down in one fell movement. The rifles roared to life, and something struck Walnut. He felt a sudden jolt, a calmness, and then a gradual slipping away. In that moment, Walnut expired. Just a dead traitor to be buried in an unmarked grave. Despite his incredible luck, his limp body was examined by the medical mayor, he who confirmed. The officer w that he was, in fact, deceased. With no ceremony, the officer dismissed the firing squad and signaled for the, the, for the traitor's corpse to be taken away. One less loose end. Okay, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to save game real quick. And I'm curious what the difference is if you go the other route. What happened? Because that, I did not expect that to go instantly to an event, or I would have saved that beforehand. Save. Loading it up. What's different, I wonder? Let us see. <laughs> Damn, Griffins. They ruined Griffonia, a contentious Griffin. I love the bottom things they always have written out. They are so good. It's a shame they're only in the loading screen. They should just have, like, Griffins are heartless creatures. No quote. They should just have a list of all their different things written somewhere. That would honestly be great. I'd read that. 100%. I just read that. Alright, troops. Just, just go. Particularly care. Mm. 
There we go. Now, what's the difference? You f have him hanged. Z Zekon was 22 years old, and by n the now, the stallion had probably seen more hangings than most ponies had in a lifetime. Not that he had much choice in the matter. The garrison's duty in Tobuk was a bore, and the auxiliary unit he was in had been assigned to cart away the bodies once the rope had done its work. But by the nightmare, there were a lot of bodies to dispose of, local rebels and bandits mostly. Still, today was different. Zakan could feel it. As he watched a few prisoners being extorted into the courtyard and up the wooden steps of the gallows, he turned to the sergeant. Hey, Sarge. Who's that? The mayor lifted her eyes from her cards only for a moment, scowling. A deserter. Walnut Drive, that's his name. Heard he abandoned his legion some years ago to come to Tobuk, of all places. Probably thought he could have some sort of vengeance, apostate and traitor that he is. Vekon let out a soft whistle. A legionnaire deserter! He'd never heard of such a thing before. The stallion, his hooves and wings abound, climbed carefully up the wooden steps, pos pos possessing some remnant of strength despite his stay in the cell. There was something fierce in his face, Zakon could tell. At this point, most would either start crying, begging, or raging against their captors. Walnut did nothing of the sort. His face, a mask of calm over what they must have been solemn acceptance as the rope was placed around his neck, followed by a black bag over his head. An officer by his side pulled out a piece of paper, beginning to read the sentence, and Zakon decided he had seen enough. He knew already how it was going to end anyway. You're up for a game, Sarge, he called. He almost missed the, no the noise of the trap door swinging open. One less loose end. The same results, but a different way of getting it. Well, I'll go back to the original timeline in the next episode. And if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.